Karnataka now hosts over 50% of India's AI slash ML talent. Bengaluru attracts 58% of all AI startup funding in India. Since 2010, 3,445 Bengaluru startups have raised capital more than Delhi NCR. And women founders here have raised $13.4 billion, 34% more than Delhi NCR. Good evening and welcome to Front Page by AIM Network, your video first tech newsroom where we don't do noise, we do clarity, context and complete so you don't have to go anywhere else. So over the last three days, we've been on the ground at BTS 2025 from the policy halls to the startup booths and tonight as the summit finally concludes, we are putting the whole story together. First, the scoreboard. Karnataka now hosts over 50% of India's AI slash ML talent. Bengaluru attracts 58% of all AI startup funding in India. Since 2010, 3,445 Bengaluru startups have raised capital more than Delhi NCR. And women founders here have raised $13.4 billion, 34% more than Delhi NCR. This is one of the world's most concentrated AI talent pools sitting inside one city. Wow! Anyway, back to BTS. BTS 2025 also marked the debut of something we've never seen from any Indian state. Karnataka unveiled the blueprint for India's first quantum city at Hazaraghatta. Backed by a 1,000 crore rupees Karnataka quantum mission and a separate 1136 crore rupees quantum supremacy center in Bengaluru. The plan advanced quantum research labs, a dedicated quantum hardware park, cryogenic and precision testing facilities, quantum cloud and data clusters, a startup district for deep tech and quantum ventures. The goal is very clear not just to use quantum tech, but to export quantum hardware, cloud services, and talent to the world. Add that to the Space Technology Policy 2025-2030, where Karnataka is targeting 50% of India's space market and 5% of the global share by 2033. Yeah, we're not going to let that go either. With support for 500 space startups, $3 billion in investments, and 50,000 skilled professionals. Well, clearly, I hope you can see the pattern. Alongside Quantum in Space, BTS 2025, also showcased the state's new policy arsenal, IT policy 2025-2030. Uh, 967 crore rupees in incentives, software exports to jump from 4.09 lakh crore rupees to 11.5 lakh crore rupees. IT share of the state economy to rise from 26% to 36%. Over 90 lakh direct and indirect jobs targeted. Strong push for AI, quantum, cybersecurity, green IT, and deep tech. Massive focus on beyond Bengaluru, Mysuru, Mangaluru, Hubli, Dharwad, Belgavi, Tumkuru, Kalaburgi, Shiv Moga. Startup policy 2025-2030. 25,000 startups in five years, at least 10,000 outside Bengaluru. 518.27 crore rupees budget. Wow. Deep focus on AI, blockchain quantum, semiconductor design, and grassroots entrepreneurship. On top of all of that, we saw Technoverse, which is integrated tech campuses with R&D labs, test beds, demo zones, and plug-and-play infrastructure. A digital hub grid to connect innovation clusters across the states. CATS, which is Center for Applied AI for Tech Solutions with 50 crore rupees dedicated to AI products and research translation. Aggressive incentives for research and development, IP creation, rent, skilling, internships, and talent relocation. So put simply, policy, money, and infrastructure are now pointing in the same direction. BDS 2025 also showcased some very real product demos. The Karnataka government unveiled 50 new innovations from state-backed startups across AI, deep tech, SaaS, cybersecurity, medtech, clean tech, IoT, ESDM, research and development, 
AVGC, Agritech, and of course, a lot more. So most of these companies have been incubated in K-Tech innovation hubs, government-backed centers of excellence and technology business incubators, and supported through flagship programs like Idea2 POC slash Elevate. And then came the moment everyone will remember. An eight-year-old founder, yes, Atvik Amit Kumar, launching Zozo Connect, a smart digital business card platform on stage in front of the IT minister and global delegates. That's what an ecosystem looks like when it's truly multi-generational. And of course, there was Kio, Karnataka's open source AI PC, priced at 18,999 rupees only, built on RISC V, running Linux Ubuntu with a four tops Edge AI engine and Bud, an AI tutor trained on the state syllabus. So we've covered Kio in detail on front page already, but here's why it matters in the context of BTS closing. Quantum City builds the future labs. IT and startup policies build the future companies. Kio puts AI compute on the desks of the next, yes, here's the number, 10 million students. Top-down infrastructure meets bottom-up access. That's the real story. The state also used BTS to announce 2,600 crore rupees plus worth of in, uh, initiatives and partnerships aimed at spreading growth beyond Bengaluru. A 20-acre drone testing facility in Chintamani with the Drone Federation of India. And 1,500 crore rupees multi-layer PCB planned by Global HDI in Tumkur. 250 crore rupees electronics manufacturing unit by Elive Solutions, a 250 crore rupees EV powertrain unit by Suyo Manufacturing in Dharwad, a 350 crore rupees critical mineral refining facility by Mini Mines Clean Tech, new skilling partnerships with Marvel and ESSCI to train women in VLSI and embedded systems. Nipuna Karnataka, yes, targeting 4,000 youth in AI, cybersecurity, and data science with 2,800 job opportunities in phase one alone. All of this sits inside the 1,000 crore rupees LEAP program designed to build serious tech clusters in tier two and tier three Karnataka, not just Ring Road, Bengaluru. Yes. One of the most important threads through BTS 2025 was this. India cannot outsource its AI future. At the foundation model panel, leaders from Sarvam AI, Zentik and Gyani.ai made it brutally clear. If India doesn't build its own foundation models, it risks becoming a digital colony. Early open models had less than 1% Indian data. Sarvam's upcoming model targets 15 to 20% Indian data in a 120B parameter system. Zentik is building Brahm AI, a scientific foundation model for engineering and industry 5.0. Gyani is training a 14B parameter multilingual voice model with 1.3 crore GPU hours turned for India's noisy, code-switched everyday conversations. Their message, AI for India is not about chatbots. It's actually about 800 million people who don't live inside Bengaluru's ring roads. And as we reported in our earlier coverage, India AI CEO Abhishek Singh has already warned that India's IT edge is under threat from AI coding tools and that the India AI missions GPU tenders and 38,000 plus GPU grid are just one side of the story. The other side is skills. If India doesn't upskill its engineers fast enough, AI will hit this country harder than the West. Over the last few days on front page, we've walked you through, well, the 1 lakh crore rupees for Karnataka's infrastructure transformation, India's first AI city blueprint near Bidadi, the launch of Kio, India's first state-built AIPC, the new IT startup and space tech policies, the rise of Quantum City, LEAP clusters and beyond Bengaluru hubs. And now, as the summit concludes, the Bengaluru Innovation Report that proves the numbers behind the ambition 
50% of India's AI machine learning talent, 58% of AI funding and the world's fifth largest AI hub right here in this city. Honestly, no one has covered Bengaluru Tech Summit 2025 the way we have. From policy rooms to panel stages to startup booths and you know what? We're just getting started. In the coming days, we'll bring you deep dive interviews, founder stories and ground reports from the people actually building this future, not just talking about it. Bengaluru Tech Summit 2025 may have wrapped up, but tonight there is no front page take because sometimes the story doesn't need analysis. It just needs someone who's been breathing the energy of the summit, walking the halls, speaking to builders, founders, policy makers, someone who has lived this week moment to moment. So for the conclusion of BTS 2025, we hand it over to our in-house tech journalist, the man on the ground, through every keynote, every aside, every innovation, Supreet, reporting live from Bengaluru Tech Summit. Supreet, ah, okay, you can hear me now, over to you. Thank you, Sudhi. As Sudhi mentioned, I'm here at day three of Bengaluru Tech Summit. It's been an enthralling summit so far at the Bengaluru International Center over the last three days. We at AM have been on ground covering all of the exciting announcements and bringing it uh, to you. First up, it's the IT policy. As you all know, there's been a huge battle of words between Andhra Pradesh and the Karnataka government over the last few days. And of course, Karnataka and Bangalore being known as the IT capital of India, we want to reclaim our position as the largest IT hub in the country. And on that note, Karnataka has announced their new IT policy from 2025 to 2030, which aims to bring the software exports from 4 lakh crore to up to 11.5 lakh crore by 2030. And a key initiative in this policy is the push that developments and establishments are going to get to move away from Bangalore and diversify their establishments to Tai 2 and Tai 3 cities like Mysuru, Hubali, Belgam, Shimoga and whatnot. So companies establishing or expanding units outside of Bengaluru get 40% of reimbursement on eligible R&D spending of up to 5 crore rupees and that's huge and developers building new IT parks in these regions get expenditure, capital expenditure support of up to 20% that is capped at 5 crore rupees and the policy also introduced uses a ton of support systems for internships, upskilling, you know, hiring, relocation benefits for workers moving outside of Bengaluru and of course as I mentioned skill development and various faculty training programs that's going to help establish these hubs outside of Bengaluru and while that's on the IT policy end the bigger news comes from the space tech policy because Karnataka has released a new five-year space tech policy aiming to establish the state to capture 50% of India's space tech market which is expected to be at 22 billion dollars by 2033 and also target 5% of the global space tech market. And the state aims for 3 billion cumulative investments during this policy period. I'm just going to look at my phone multiple times because I want to get the numbers right and don't miss out on any details for you guys. And these investments are set to receive, you know, various subsidies, exemptions, you know, for plant and machinery, land, stamp duty, and other, you know, significant costs associated with establishing these projects. And the plan also focuses on creating a skilled workforce of 50,000 people, including 15,000 women through training programs for school students, diploma holders, graduates and young professionals. And colleges will get support to set up labs, upgrade their existing infrastructure, their courses and run space tech modules in partnership with ISRO and in space. And the policy also sets aside support for 500 startups and MSMEs and they'll also get funding through Elevate and venture funds through Kitwen. And the policy will run for set aside support for 500 startups and MSMEs through, uh, you know, they're going to get various uh, funding amounts through Elevate and other venture funds like Kitwen. And as I mentioned, the policy is going to run for five years and will only be available for firms registered under KITS with in-space authorization or vendor credentials to ISRO or other global OEMs. Next up is the startups. While we're shooting here, there's also an announcement going on uh, at the Future Makers Conclave where you have bright leaders, entrepreneurs 
founders and government officials coming together to discuss the startup landscape in Karnataka. Uh, it is said that the 500 crore investment will be announced for various startups uh, you know, in this event and we're going to bring all of those details as soon as it's out for you guys. But at that moment, the new startup policy 2025 to 2030 is targeting the formation of 25,000 new startups so, you know, over the uh, next five years through various funding, market opportunities, you know, access to talent, infrastructure and other various inclusion uh, related policies. And the state government Government also announced six new uh, six new letters of intent that's going to total 3,500 jobs across various deep tech domains like semiconductors, drone tech, and biotech. And these projects include new units in electronics manufacturing, EV systems, battery recycling, biotechnology, and dedicated drone testing sites across various regions in Karnataka. Let me tell you some of the most interesting and key letter of intent signed in the Bengaluru Tech Summit. The first one uh, establishes a drone testing facility to be set up in a 20-acre site in Chintamani. Uh, you know, by the Drone Federation of India and you also uh, and for this government will provide the land while the Federation will bring in companies to use the site and this has been provided with an outlay of 25 crore uh, to 100 crore and you have another global firm the global HDI will establish a multi-layer PCB manufacturing plot uh, plant on an 84 acre plot in Tumakuru with an investment of 1500 crores and then you have Suyo manufacturing has signed an LOI of 20, 250 crore to set up an EV powertrain unit in Dharwad and another facility worth 350 crore will be established by Mini Mines Clean Tech Solutions for critical uh, mineral refining. And the government said that these initiatives will of course add jobs across various key sectors and as they reiterate, uh, you know, strengthen efforts to diversify the ecosystems beyond Bengaluru and alongside these investments, the state also in introduced a series of upskilling initiatives and notably uh, the global semiconductor giant Marvel and the Electronics Sector Skill Council of India have signed an MOU to train 90 women in VLSI design and embedded systems. A program will target talent in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities and has been integrated with various graduate level uh, courses. The state also, of course, you have the uh, Nipurna Karnataka initiative to train 4,000 youths in fields like AI, cybersecurity, and data science. And officials said that the first phase of this will access uh, will open access to 2,800 job opportunities uh, with uh, you know partner companies. Uh, and of course, besides all of these announcements, we also had the new KEO AI PC uh, that was announced by the government of Karnataka that has been developed through Kionix and folks, most of us had forgotten uh, Kionix. This was the state government entity that manufactured electronics, you know, just seeded the entire electronic city IT ecosystem in the 90s came up with various upskilling initiatives and also assisted states like Andhra Pradesh and Bihar in IT governance and uh, you know the IT ecosystem. They are making a huge comeback now, uh, uh, institution which faced a lot of troubles in terms of financials uh, you know, in the uh, uh, last few years but they are making a comeback with uh, KO, AIPC and uh, well that's a lot of announcements. I am not sure if all of you were able to follow the numbers but we are going to link all of the details in the description uh, below but the interesting part is that you know looking forward to how how well all of these investments will materialize in the coming years and of course uh, BTS has been a huge event it's it's a flagship event of sorts in Bengaluru held at the Bengaluru International uh, you know exhibition center at the outskirts of the city and uh, yeah I think that those were the key updates over the last three days we'll closely follow up with all of these developments see how these MOUs and letter of intent you know sort of materialize uh, throughout the years and how it sets up the competition with other states like Andhra Pradesh I mean that's been a huge debate over the last uh, you know few weeks and months ever since Vizag got the uh, Google uh, data center so yes folks I think that's it from Bengaluru Tech Summit we've had uh, you know 12,000 uh, 1200 plus exhibitors from you know 60 countries showcasing what each country can offer in terms of their global establishments in Karnataka we've had uh, you know, boots from biotech, space tech, drones, you know, semiconductors, electronics, computer science, AI and whatnot. I think you'll have to be here to experience the event at full scale. Uh, it's almost ending uh, and you know we've had, as I mentioned, we're still having the future uh, uh, you know, sense conclave that's going on in Hall 4 where the government of Karnataka is planning to announce a new round of investments for startups that is touted to be at you know 500 crore rupees. We'll share all of the details on front page as soon as uh, you know, it's out. So it's going to be interesting. We've had, we still have talks left from, you know, Zepto's co-founder with Ankur Variku, Subhanshu Shukla, the Indian who recently went to space is at the moment giving a talk. A lot of exciting stuff that's going on. So yeah, follow, follow uh, AIM network and front page for, you know, real-time updates. Thank you so much for watching.